Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Friday Live. It is 4 o'clock. It's a great day today. As you can see, I am not alone. I am here with Patrick Fowler, who is really funny. He downplays it a little bit sometimes, but he's really, really funny. Um, say, say hello. Hi. <laughs> That's, hi. I'm super funny. Super funny guy. Anyways, I met Patrick probably, what, like three years ago? Mm -hmm. Three years ago, and we were in school together, and uh, I was just telling him this. It was, it was funny, it was funny, haha, -ha, funny, because I didn't really know how to take him. Like, he didn't really, you didn't really, like make a lot of friends at the beginning, maybe? I don't know what you're talking about, so I, many friends. But, but you would like sit by yourself and then you'd like make these like funny comments though towards the professor. Do you remember that? And yeah, no, like, here's the thing, I was, doing? I was sober going back to school and so like it was a whole new experience and I knew that the, the best way to learn was to be to sit in the front row and ignore everybody else because I have the worst ADD ever and that's why I was terrible in school in the first place besides being high all the time too. But that's the best way for me to learn. Sit in the front row, ask questions, ignore everybody else because they're all distractions. And so that's probably what you saw. Well, now I feel like a jerk for saying that because You're so that's... Bad. But yeah, but you were really funny. And you would make these comments and the professor would be like, ho, 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 you're so funny. Didn't you do like a bit one time too? You got up in front of the class or you did you did something, didn't you? What was that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, probably. Uh, I mean, I don't remember specifically, but <laughs> I just think that that's kind of what it, you know, it's my nature, I guess. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, he's on the show today, you guys. We're talking about recovery and humor and why it's so important. Um, is anybody on saying anything? We got Mark on here. You guys are rad. You're rad. We're rad. Everyone's rad. Everyone say hello. Hello. So rad. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's any other comments there yet. Nope. Nope. Oh, we've got Vanna White right here in the background. Say hi, Vanna White. Hi, Vanna White. Anyways, Patrick, so mm. tell us about yourself. Um, I mean, I'm... Uh, in recovery. I work in recovery. Um, I try to stay busy on a regular basis. I do a lot of comedy. Um, uh, like obviously in the last year there hasn't been a lot of comedy. Um, there's no crowds um, which is kind of like any of my shows in general. Um, but to be honest with you um, it's really therapeutic to go out and do comedy on a regular basis but um, kind of over the last couple of years working in treatment, you kind of have to balance out, um, you know, doing comedy, working in treatment, you know, you gotta stay professional, and then meanwhile you gotta understand that like everything follows you around, so if you're gonna be telling jokes on stage, you know, you still have to keep, you know, your professionalism to a certain extent. Um, but, you know, I'd like to get back out there and do some more comedy, you know. Um, meanwhile, I'm just really busy. Um, I've been working as a program director at a place called Safe and Sound. I still work at a, um, a detox also um, there and at another place. I go to school also still at Cal State Fullerton at night. Um, I, and I mean, and there's a couple kids that evidently I'm a parent to. So, you know, I'm like super busy, but um, for the most part, um, I've been sober for over six years and um, probably been in recovery for about 10 years, which means um, obviously there's been some um, trial and error out there, which yes. is, you know, I, I don't regret any of it because it's, it's got me to the place that I'm at today. And um, every single relapse or lapse or whatever it is has taught me something that helps me relate with clients in this industry. Yeah, and, um, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't regret anything that's led me up to where I'm at today. So. so how do you juggle your schedule? Because you're one of the busiest people I know, and I know like what you're saying, like having that balance and, and having self-care and like taking time for yourself and your family and your kids and your significant other and everything you got going on. Like how do you do that in recovery? Um, <laughs> I, you know, I just, I guess like I just like, sign up for things and like, um, s like school, for instance, this semester, I, I knew that I was going to have trouble, um, 
trying to take the amount of classes that I wanted to take, but I just signed up for them and, you know, not to be weird, but like, you know, I do pray on a, on a regular basis and I, and I, you know, kind of ask for guidance and stuff like that. And, you know, things work out, you know what I mean? They, they wedge themselves out of my life or wedge themselves into my life according to just how things go. I just kind of have faith and, and, and let it roll on that note. Um, but yeah, I just, it just falls into place basically. You know, you try to work a schedule and then if you find a problem, it, it gets eliminated and then you move on to another, you know, another day. You know, it works so itself prayer. in. So prayer. Prayer works for you. Yeah, it, prayer works for me. Yeah. I love that. Let's see what we got here. We got Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Good to see you in here. Say hi to Jamie. Hi, Jamie. She's a fan of yours. Hi, Jamie. Anybody else? Vanna White over there? Uh, sorry, I can't read anything. I <laughs> oh, that's Mark. Hey, buddy. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Okay, so I wanted to ask you this. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that you were funny? Oh, I thought you were going to say an addict. <laughs> well, that, that, that's next. When did uh, you realize you were funny? Um, I think that, like, from things I've learned, that, like, um, people find out about what they are from what other people tell them. So, I mean, to this day, I really don't even think I'm funny, to be honest with you, but a lot of people, it's been overwhelming of the amount of people that tell me I'm funny, so I'll just go with it. <laughs> um, I know that I've done shows and I've been on stage enough times to hear the audience and that gives me reassurance that like, oh, maybe I'm funny, you know, or I, I, I felt like I was on a fire there, you know, or whatever. So. I mean, it's, I still don't think I'm funny. You're you hilarious. Know? Uh, I mean, it's the kindest I mean, thing I've ever heard. No, no, you really are though. Like you're really, you seem genuinely funny. Thank like, you, like I appreciate even it. Just the way you just deliver in a conversation, like if you're, you're just funny. You know, there's just certain people are just funny, like Dave Chappelle, or like certain people just look at them and like their face is just funny. In a, in a way, and like you just have a funny way. Funny about face. You. That's you hilarious. That's <laughs> great. Face. No, I'll give you. I'll give you a little something though that I um, when I was super high out of high school and I was just like wandering around in whatever college I was in just to make my mom happy at the time in in 2000 and whatever maybe whatever the year was. Um, I kept because my parents were asking, "What are you gonna do with your life?" You know and. I was like, um, I don't know. And I started thinking like, what am I good at? And I realized back then, like um, right out of high school that I'm like, you know what? I was the class clown at my junior high. I was the class clown in my high school. And to me, that was like a, a great thing that I was like, I felt really proud about that. So I'm like, oh, I'm good at being funny maybe, you yeah. know? So then I kind of pursued the idea of like doing comedy, but then um, then you find out how much like you get paid for doing comedy, and you're like, oh, how am I gonna make this work? You yeah, know? hard to make a living. Yeah, so I sold drugs at the same you time. Sold drugs. Like, whatever. <laughs> it's a winning combination. Yeah, it's, not so much. It's Just super. Joking. It's a super funny world out there in the drug dealing game. It's so so funny. how was that? Because that was my next question. So when did you discover you were an addict? What was the point where you knew? And then how did your addiction work and then not work? with comedy? Um, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I found out I was an addict. That's funny because I ask my clients this all the time and it's one of those questions that I want, you know, if you're you know, working on your recovery that I want people to understand and it's part of the step work, you know, it's like, when did you find out you're an addict and then what'd you do about it? Usually the question's nothing I kept using and yeah. that was my situation as well. Um, I found out I was an addict like, um, when I was like selling drugs and I started getting into opiates and then I was just like doing them for fun and I was doing it for so long that um, one day I was like, oh, this is getting boring. I'm gonna stop doing this. This is dumb, you know, like it's so repetitive. So then I stopped that day and then I started getting like super lethargic and sick and I was just like, this is so dumb. Like, you know, not even thinking at all to put the correlation together that it was the drugs or whatever. Yeah. And then, um, I was like, okay, well, I'll quit tomorrow. And then like I used and then, and I was like right away like better. And then it kind of hit me right then. I was like, oh my God, I think I'm a drug addict. You know, yeah. this is crazy. Um, so that I kept that quiet. I kept using, of course, you know, but what I did was I kept that quiet and I never told anybody about it. But that was when I actually really deep down knew that I had a probably an issue at the time. But that went on for like more years, but um, 
how does it go hand in hand with comedy? Um, when I first started doing comedy, in fact, like I had a nickname in high school, it was Fader Fowler, and um, Fader. Okay. Fader Fowler, and so like I was really into it. Like, yeah, I love that name. Like, I'm faded all the time. Like, I'm Fader Fowler. This is so cool. And so I would, I started comedy with that stage name. It was Fader Fowler, and so A it was a name that people would remember, and B it was like my like persona. Like, he's super high all the time on stage, and um, so I kind of went with it, and I loved it. You know, Fader Fowler. Um, and then I would go on stage and I was like new at comedy and I was like telling jokes but they were like shock value jokes and um, I realized that like that didn't work that wasn't really me I was like super high and I wasn't connecting with the audience but I didn't know that was important at the time I was just like this is funny, like you guys are stupid. Like this is funny, like you're not laughing because you're dumb, yeah. like this is really funny. And then what, I would go into a whole bit and it would just be a big waste of time because I didn't know how the relationship or the connection with the audience was until like I had got sober and came back to do comedy and I realized that just those split seconds on stage when you're like telling a joke and you're not, you're not feeling it with the audience, you can save yourself an entire bombing session, you know, because you'd be like, oh, okay, wait a minute, like, they're not going to like this political thing, this crowd's not feeling it right away, I can tell, and then you can change directions and save yourself from, so yeah, being sober in comedy is a tremendous difference, you know, because you can be a little more sharper and connect with the audience better. Yeah, and when you're, when you're saying it like that, it made me think of relationships too. <laughs> You know what I mean though? Because it's like when, for me, like when I was actively using, if the person I was with didn't agree or didn't like it or didn't have the reaction, I'm like, that's you. Yeah, they're an idiot. That's not me. They're that's not getting it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazing, you suck. But yeah, it's like the same thing. And then you get sober and you realize like, wow, like a lot of this is me. Yeah, that sucks. It does suck, but. You get sober and have to like. And, and we gotta like be aware and, and work on ourselves and all that fun stuff. So what was your solution? Like what, what really worked for you when you got sober? What did you do? Um, I relapsed a hundred times. I don't know. I mean that to me, I'm a hard headed individual and I know there's a lot of people out there that are super hard headed and like, I can't tell you how many times I would go to meetings that I didn't want to go to and somebody would tell me like, hey, don't go on a date when you have four months sober. Don't go on a date to a bar. And you're like, okay, buddy, that's your story. Like, let me go figure that out. You know, like, yeah. like that's your problem. And then I'd go and I wouldn't drink at the bar, but then the girl would be like, let's get some cocaine. Like afterwards, and I'd be like, oh, okay, let's do that. And then, you know, obviously that would turn into a relapse and, you know, or hey, don't, you know, another thing you'd hear in a meeting, don't sell drugs while you're sober. And you're like, okay, like I want to stay sober that's not a problem you know like that's your problem so you know I'd go and like one month would go by and I would sell drugs and stay sober and I'd be like you AA people are so dumb like you guys don't know better and then of course like another 10 days later I'm getting loaded again you know and so like all these lessons you have to like go back into the meeting with your tail between your legs and be like hey Brian remember when you said like don't do that like you're right I shouldn't do that you know and then like one lesson after another after another like multiple lessons of what not to do, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think so, like sobriety comes down to like what not to do and what to do and have a combination of those two things. You know, because um, it's really important to me to to have to like touch the stove so many times and be like, oh, that's hot. Oh, oh that's hot, that's hot, like over and over again. Yeah. Until I'm like, okay, it's hot, forget it, you know? Yeah, that uh, self will run riot and the ego and the pride. We were just talking about that earlier. Um, about addicts are super defiant, right? For the most part, and defensive. Mm. And we don't want to be told what to do. And so, yeah, I was the same way. You know, when I first got sober and went through AA, and I was like, yeah, maybe for you guys, not for me, or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And yeah, I had my I had my issues as well until I came around and went, you know what? What's the harm in trying this? Yeah, it's painful, and it's painful to watch other people do the same thing. And you're like, you know, I get it, go do it. But these days with like fentanyl and stuff, like that, it's a dangerous. You know, the big books talking about, you know, let them go out and do some controlled drinking and see how that works out. Like, and that's a great strategy. But like these days with fentanyl, like that controlled using is dangerous. It's you know definitely. what I mean? Yeah. Just like I can't even tell you the amount of people that have passed away recently because of this whole thing. So. It's a real serious thing, you know, like, you know, having humor in recovery is one thing and there's a lot of funny things in recovery, but um, to be honest with you, it's also serious and deadly, you yeah. know what I mean? But I try to have fun with my clients and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, 
on that note, you know, I have a lot of clients that are in that range from like 20 to 28 years old or whatever. And they, it's funny because I have to like check in with the kids and my kids just be like, Hey, what is like, cause there's all this lingo, you know, that's like newer. I'm not trying to say I'm old or whatever, but you know, all these clients are just like, that's like savage hundred. Like that's right, so right. sus. Bet, bet. <laughs> oh, bet, bet. That's sus. And then I have to go home and be like, Hey, what is like sus mean? And then like the 11 and 13 13 year old would just be like, that means suspect dad, like, you know, like, I didn't, I didn't know what you were talking suspicious, about. Like, you know, it's just like sus, suspicious, like, you know, like, it's just, you know, like, <laughs> like sketchy kind of, and I'm just like, okay, so then I'll go back and pretend like I'm super cool with the, with the young clients, you know, and she'd be like, hey, what's up guys, that's, that's sus, right, everything's sus, right, it's just, <laughs> suspect and suspicious what is that and then I still don't I don't get the cool you know yeah savage is it savage hundred right hundred bet bet and then totally. we feel like the parent I'm so out of it so I don't even really care at this point you know what that <laughs> let's see the comments Do we have comments Ren you know Ren oh Ren's my boy what did he say Ricky Fowler. Ricky Fowler. What, who's, who's what, is there a story behind this? What's Ricky Fowler? Ricky Fowler is a professional golfer, and that's oh, my wait, name. Oh, you were talking about yeah, Ricky right. Fowler. He was just talking about Ricky Fowler. You wanted, you want to explain why you were talking about Ricky? Oh uh, yeah, because I'm in recovery, and like I have to find a different addiction. So I do like fantasy golf, and Ricky Fowler really blew it for me today. So sorry about that. So let's X Ricky Fowler out. He's that's not... funny because we were literally just talking about that. Okay, what else do we got? Fentanyl is a pretty serious and it's very scary. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the difference. Like what you were saying nowadays, it's like, it's not just go out and drink a little bit. People are going out and they're dying. Yeah. So for you, how do you, how do you deal with that working in treatment? Cause I know for us, it's different than the average person, right? We deal a lot with grief and loss. So what does that look like for you? In what aspect are you saying? Like in just dealing with it, you know, like what do you do to, to not get burnout, you know, to, uh, to not get too personally invested um, and to be able, again, going back to that balance, you know, when you're dealing with grief and loss. I mean, it really does, um, like you try to like keep your work at work, you know what I mean? And um, compartmentalize like home life and this, but I mean, you get attached to clients sort of in a sense, you know, in the, in the sense where you, like when you see a client who wants it, then, and I'll tell you this right now, out there, if there's anybody that's trying to get sober right now, like, and you don't want it, like you're not gonna get the right help. You know, you gotta like really want it, and then like the clinicians at uh, the place you're at will be like, they will see that, and they will be like, I'm gonna put a lot of effort into this person because they're putting a lot of effort in. And that's the real key to getting sober, you know? And so you will see some clients that are just there because their mom makes them there, and the, you know, makes yeah. them go there, or the judge has them there, or whatever. And you know, I give everybody my 100%, but at the same time, like if they're not trying, then I'm not trying, you know? So, but there's some clients that like give it their hundred and you just want to be like make sure your your um, tools are there to help them because you know they're trying then I want to try yeah. you know, if that makes sense so um, yeah it, most part is just try to leave your work at work but unfortunately as we both know that like when you're working in treatment um, sometimes it goes after hours you know people are calling and this and that, and to be honest with you, I'm in the program, you know, um, I work stabs, I've had, you know, sponsees before, and you know, it just doesn't end at 5 p.m., you know what I mean? Like, people call you at nine, and they want them to use, and you do the best you can to like, kind of steer them away from that idea, but yeah. the reality is I don't have control over what people do, you know, and so you kind of gotta let people do what they, what they want to do sometimes, you know, which yeah. is unfortunate, because like we said, there's fentanyl out there, and that's, you know, a dangerous, dangerous situation. So. Yeah. What else we got here? Oh, Ren keeps going on this, the, the golf. <laughs> he, he, he's out playing golf right now too. I think that's why he's so hung up on the golf. So yeah, so you do fantasy golf, fantasy football. Ugh, my girlfriend loves this conversation. His girlfriend loves this conversation. You're having an affair with your phone, right? Because you've got fantasy golf, fantasy football. What else you got? Fantasy. Um, you know, that's, that's basically it that's on, basically on my, it. my gambling addiction. But um, for the most part, um, that's something also I talk to the clients about. Like, if you know yourself and you're aware of you, then I think there's a, a chance that you can kind of identify your issues. And I'm not gonna lie, that's one of my issues, I'll tell you that right now. So, 
be a little bit more aware of yourself if you can. And, uh, and I think anything in moderation too, right? Like, and that's kind of why I brought it up because like we stop using drugs and alcohol and whatever else we're doing. And like, we need to have something else in our life, whether it's a hobby, um, um, going to school, you know, our jobs, things we're passionate about, being of service, like, you know, being, being a sponsor and having sponsees and having things that we implement into our life to replace those bad habits, you know, and I know you joke and say, oh, it's like gambling and my another addiction, but as long as it's done in a healthy way, I think it's important because we need those things that we can turn to. Yeah, mine's not healthy, that's but true. I'm just going to say that that's true. Like everything in moderation is the goal, right? But, um, uh, I mean, I see it all the time. I see people that get sober and then, you know, it's all about the gym all day, every single day. And just right. like, then the gym ruins relationships. And then like, like, you know, like our fantasy golf or football or sports gambling or whatever. Oh, I'm sober. I'm still sober. Yeah. But you know, this kind of a thing can be an issue. And, um, you know, that's, that's the awareness level I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, like we are addicts. If you know you're an addict, you know, you're an alcoholic. I know I'm an addict. So everything I do, I go hard, you know, and that's what I need to be aware of. So. That awareness level is really important to me in my yeah. program and that's why I continue to pray on a regular basis to help me and guide me through my life and to guide me through these issues that I fall upon, whether it's drugs or alcohol or not. You yeah. Know, so. so prayer, moderation, being of service. What else would you say to someone out there listening right now? What would be your advice? I mean, prayer I mean you, you just gotta like I don't want to say the exact term but like ask for help you know don't be afraid to do that you know ask for help um, contact who you need to contact and and put that work in you know because the problem I see is that like it's such a huge mountain it looks like a huge mountain that is looks so hard to climb that you're like forget it I'm not even gonna try but I mean, you, you, there's a million cliches out there, just like one step at a time, you know, one day at a time, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, it's just like you just take one little step and then that step leads to this step. It's just, you know, it just seems so overwhelming. But like if you can ask for help and you can go and, and just do what's what's told of you, it's scary, but just do it. You know, I mean, that's you just got to jump, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's. Asking for help, being vulnerable, absolutely. Yeah, one step at a time. I know that works for me in my life because if I was to try to look at it all when I was getting sober and even now today, like the stuff that I'm going through on a personal level, you know, my own struggles, my own situations, if I was to like try to look at all of it, I'd probably pull all my hair out right this second. But I know, like I don't have to it's be- a lot. I know, I just have to stay sober for today and that's enough. Absolutely. Jana waits over there, she's, were, were you doing, were you, She's got a mask on and it's, and it's hard to tell exactly what she's doing or what's going on. But I think, I think we're almost done here. Um, but before we go, hmm. we were talking about jokes and doing a little stand up, but unfortunately pretty much all his skits are, um, explicit and inappropriate, but I don't know, maybe there's like something that you could leave everybody with. Well, I don't know if there's like <laughs> jokes, but like the thing that I was talking about is that like there is humor in, in um, recovery. There really is. Um, it is a real serious thing, but um, you know, there's funny things that happen in, in treatment. There's funny things and, and you just gotta be willing to find it and look for it, you know? Um, like I, I feel like in Orange County, we have the most entitled drug addicts on the planet here. Cause working in detox and stuff like that, you know, like. <laughs> so true. <sighs> You know, I've got, I've got clients walking around the detox talking about like, yo, hey bro, where's all the organic gluten-free food? And I'm just like, dude, you were shooting up with toilet water yesterday and now you want organic food? That's what you want right now? Microwave a burrito and take a nap, buddy. Come on, you know what I'm saying? So this is like some of the stuff that you can identify in, in recovery that can be funny, but it's, um, you know, it's always a serious topic, you know? And, and another thing I see is, um, you know, in meetings, you'll hear people saying used to too much, you know, like, oh, I used to do this and I used to do that. Like there's a guy in this meeting who was like, he's like, hey, my name's Mike, I'm an alcoholic. And like, you know, I used to like prostitute myself for drugs and alcohol. We're like, whoa, Mike, you're two days sober. Used to was Monday. You need to get that 30 day chip before you tell us that story. Okay, buddy, why don't you go ahead and, uh, 
you know, figure that out first. But. Yeah, that's funny. So, I mean, if you're there and you're able to identify, and that's something about being sober, is you can identify some, some you know, really funny things, you know. Um, you know, there's another, there's funny that like miracles w used way too much in, in meetings, you know, when girls talk about today, it's a miracle. Like I was listening to this girl um, at a meeting the other day and she was like, she's like, my name's Tiffany, I'm an addict. And like, today is a miracle. Like everything in my life is a miracle right now. Like <laughs> my life is a miracle because I'm sober. Do you know what's really a miracle? Me and all three of my sisters, we're in rehab at the same time and that's a miracle. <laughs> and I'm like, not for your parents. That's <laughs> Super expensive. What? Oh. <laughs> That's like crazy. But. That's the funny I'm talking about. So you guys, I think what we get out of this is that we need to find the humor in recovery. We need to find the humor in our lives. We need to not take ourselves too serious. I've been telling myself that a lot, especially getting into this new role. I can get all worked up, get anxious, get this, get that. Oh, how do I look? This, that, the other thing. And it's like, you know what? what? Like we need to be able to laugh at ourselves and find the humor in it and just like be who we are. That's it, right? True story. True story. True that. I'll tell you right now, life's a lot better for me today being sober. Um, yeah. You know, you can make a decision to live that way, which is totally fine. But I can just, I can only give you my testimony that like my life is way better on this side of the tracks. So. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys. That's it for today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for Thank having you for being me. being here. <laughs> We're going to go. Love yourself, love each other, find the humor and everything. Bye.